Hello, Bar McCarthy here from Bold and Break. I am delighted to be back with a Redshift tutorial on caustics. There are plenty of tutorials out there just to show you how to get started, turn it on and that's it. It's a little bit more intricate than that. We're going to look at several things that affect your caustics along the way in getting caustics to work. Different types of refractor material will emit caustics differently, which brings me on to the first part of our tutorial, which is your IOR. And the IOR will be the main instrument in how your caustics is affected. There is plenty of resources out there. There is an IOR table on the website I use. I'll put the link in the description below. And it gives you the index of refraction of different materials. And that value determines how the light bends within a refractive material. All very important to know when you're dealing with caustics. We understand now that our IOR affects how our light bends. To get our caustics working, we want to right click on the receiver of our caustics, which is going to be just our plane here. We go down to render, redshift object, and we go to visibility and we override. We want to make sure receive caustic photons is ticked on. And then this is our beer mug. And we want to right click on this again, go down to render tag, redshift object, override now an important note here we want to make sure cast caustic photons is ticked on this is basically going to be where caustics emits from now the next thing we want to do is our beer glasses looking really jagged here we want to go to geometry override enable and we're just going to put that up and we have a smoother beer glass that's important because the tessellation and the way your object is modeled will certainly affect your caustics as well so again that's another variable as well as the IOR we want to just freeze our geometry here so redshift knows there's no going to be no geometry updates we just proceed with redshift calculating the light in our scene we have a dome light we have a spotlight we're not going to touch the spotlight just yet and our dome light is using just a HDR of a cafe, which I got for free online. I'll put a link in the description below. The next thing we can do is we can select our dome light and just tick on caustics. And we're still not getting any feedback of caustics happening. And that is because we don't have the bucket render enabled. The bucket render needs to be enabled for caustics to actually work here. It's messy and blotchy and slow because we don't we haven't optimized our scene correctly. So all the little dots that you see here, they are essentially your photons. There are a lot of them being cast through this glass through your dome light. And the dome light is already dealing with the whole scene. So that's not I think that's not really the most optimal way to use your caustics or to control your caustics because control over the caustics is probably the most important thing to get those glistening effects that people love on Instagram. Let's turn off our caustics our dome light. We have a spotlight here and I will basically turn that on. We're going to turn this off and you're going to see our spotlight is set up just above the glass. We're going to turn on the caustics for the spotlight light we're going to restart the bucket render we're only making one light do all the work we really only want caustics to be working with our spotlight here so we're going to bring down diffusion and we're going to bring down reflection we've taken a snapshot of this we're going to go into our render settings and we are going to turn off automatic sampling we are going to tick reflection refraction and our light bring everything up right to 512 and that should help our render time a little bit and then bring up samples max to 32 and we have a radiance point cloud here which we don't really want if we can afford to use a second brute force we're going to bring that up to 256 and we're going to go into our caustics panel and we're going to talk about a few settings in here now the photons here don't really matter unless you're using a photon map and you're loading one the recommendation is to not use a photon map the reason being is it's an older technique every time you want to change something you have to go back unload the photon map and then load another one don't worry too much about the photons here the photons that really matter are the photons in your caustics light and we're going to call this caustics light just to keep things simple if you want to be adding more photons you can do it here the blur radius if we up this because we have all these little dots which are the photons being fired by this light through the glass and it's reflecting out it will blur these photons into each other which can be a great technique for certain scenarios not all the time if you're looking for something specific and sharp but it will certainly bring down your render time as you can see here and it will blur out now it doesn't look great does it so mm, let's keep this at one for now the next and probably one of the most important part of your caustics besides besides your IOR and switching it on of course is your trace steps and this is where you will really start to see your trace step come into play your combined amount of 
trace depths is these two values here. We're going to put this up to 12. First, we're going to take a shot, screenshot of that, and we're going to see a huge difference. What trace depth does, as I've said in my previous video about global illumination, is when the light fires off, it kind of allows, it's, it's a threshold to how far the light can travel. And with caustics, you want the light as far as possible. Um, and so you want your ray for reflection traveling further and you want your ray for refraction traveling further. So let's just put this up to 12 uh, and put your refraction up to 12 because we're really holding in on caustics. Put your reflection up to maybe 10 and you will see quite a difference in how this looks. Okay, so we've done that render and you can see a massive difference in how the light is traveling through the glass. This could make a difference because it's allowing the light bounce through things more, but this is just one object. Let's bring it down to maybe 10, bring this down to eight and go again. Okay, so that is a shorter amount of time, two seconds off, and it's not a huge difference. Yeah, we're losing some light traveling through the glass here, but it's not not major, and um, we can lose it now. So we're still getting these dots placed around our glass, and it just doesn't look great. What can we do? We can up our photons. Now, we're gonna up, up this to eight. You will see a difference because it's firing more photons. Now, we're actually getting a little bit of a faster render, which is nice. Redshift has more information to deal with, and it can up optimize that information better, which is the joy of Redshift. Put that up to 800,000 photons being fired through the glass, and we've got a much sharper look to our caustics. And we could probably bring it up even more because we're still seeing some of those dots, or we can go back in to our caustics panel here and bring this up to two. So it should be much faster. That's looking a little bit cleaner. I hope this helped. I hope this gave you an understanding of how caustics work. Uh, please like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, was this helpful let me know in the comments below thank you for watching and goodbye